from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering Activio 2019 Data Driven. Brought to you by Activio. We're back with theCUBE at Actifio Data Driven. Day one, Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE. Steve Duplessis here, he's the, uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to say benevolent dictator of Enterprise Strategy Group, chief analyst, founder. Welcome, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, nice, for ha nice to be here. How are you and, fellows? And we're doing great, congratulations. Newly, newly Betrothed. Married. That's I, awesome. I was, yeah, thank you very much. It's great, looking good. You're here for your honeymoon. This is it, <laughs> this is it. After a few marriages, this is the honeymoon. <laughs> Well, it's good to know that the honeymoon's not over. So, um, uh, let's talk data. Data? What's happening? That is a terrible question, Dave. So, yeah, data. Okay, so everybody talks data. You hear the bromide, data is the new oil, data is the new competitive advantage. I do like that one. You do like, what, data is the new oil? So it's funny because we're, I, I think I'm way older than you, you look better. God, no, not even close. But if you go back in time, as long as we've all been doing this, it's been kind of hilarious, really, in retrospect, when you watch me. We watch these massive industries get created, like the EMCs. Like just created because all they were about was building bigger buckets to put data in, zeros and ones. But no context, completely useless, just big buckets. So we valued, wow, you built a big, fast bucket, and then IBM or Hitachi, whoever was going to leapfrog you next, built a faster, bigger bucket. And that was uh, what the world considered valuable. <laughs> and it's now fast forward to the modern day, and oh, maybe the thing that's really valuable is those zeros and ones <laughs> in context. Maybe it's not really the bucket that's uh, so valuable anymore, so. So, do you think the, I mean, are the bucket builders still bucket builders, or are they actually becoming data insight creators, or is it just still build a better bucket that's cheaper, faster? So that's a great question. Right. I think that uh, we're, first of all, you, you still have to have the buckets, right? It's, it's a relative, who's going to make a smarter bucket builder? I don't know. You, you need some place to put it though. You, you're right. you're going to have to put it someplace and you're going to have to deliver it. And the good news, you know, Storage and or infrastructure, I'll just say, is, is the most brilliant business ever from a capacity demand perspective. No one ever needs less, right? You always need more. It's just a matter of what you're going to do with it and how you're going to address that. So it's, we've propagated for 50 years an infrastructure business that build a bigger, faster bucket, build a bigger, faster processor, build a bigger, faster, and every time you, um, you solve one of those particular problems, as long as data growth doesn't abate, and it never does, as long as there's more versus less, it's just uh, the, every, every time we fix one problem, we, we you know, you stick your finger in the dike and another hole springs up. So right now, we're at the, we've got more processing capabilities than we could ever possibly use. Not true. Right, we'll figure out a way to use it more. So the the probably last five years of and for the next five years, you, we didn't talk about analytics. We didn't talk about IoT. We didn't talk about any of those things that are all just precursors to oh crap, we can make a whole bunch more data and do stuff with it. All the so so compute is kind of a similar dynamic. It's sort of insatiable, but compute is a relatively crappy business compared to storage, right? So, Storage is 60% plus gross margin business servers. I don't know, you're lucky if you're getting in the low 20s. Um, why is that? Well, number one, it's essentially a monopoly. And so 20% is wonderful if you're Intel and you get it all, right? It's well, Intel. Intel's got great gross margins, right? right. So, yeah. Everybody else yeah. does it. There you go, it's they Intel. Don't, <laughs> down the supply chain, it's where you're going to add value. Yeah. And so it's difficult for any of those guys to add value. Hard to get gross margins out of like bending sheet. Yeah, a box. Yeah. All right. So, Steve, ESG is now 20 years old. I know. When I think crazy? back 20 years ago, you know, sure, you know, disk capacity, price per dollar, uh, you know, price per gigabyte, you know, all that stuff has changed a lot. But the other thing, you know, I think back 20 years, talk about automation and intelligent infrastructure. We were using those terms back then. Sure. 
one of the things that, I, I, that, 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 right, it, well, I, 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 that's what I wanted to ask you about is like, right, back then when you talked about, well, how intelligent was it and what could it do and automation was there, it was a lot of times, you know, I'm just building a little script or I'm doing something like that. At least, you know, from what we see, it feels like, you know, today's automation and intelligence is light times away from what we were talking about 20 years oh, ago. Oh, for sure. And it's true. What, what, what are you seeing in that space? Well, so remember where we came from. When we were talking originally about automation and orchestration, we were talking about how to manage a box, how to expand a box, how to manage infrastructure. Now it's data operations, right? Now it's, that, that's the whole point of Actifio. Right, to begin with is, all right, if you are good enough and smart enough to have the data, sort of everything's <laughs> kind of matters there, you've got to have the data, then what can, you op what can you automate and orchestrate from a data out perspective, not from a box, not from, a, oh, let's scale out or scale up or something like that. that, that again, that's just a bigger bucket. It's a better bucket. Um, but to be able to actually take data and say, you know what, I don't even know necessarily what I'm going to want to use this for, but I know that I got to have, it's got to be, I have to be able to go click, click, click and get it if, uh, if and when I figure out, hmm, I want to find out how lowering the price of Charmin in Seattle at a Walmart is going to affect my revenue or my supply chain or whatever it is. All right. So, so one of the things I've talked with you in the past about is the, the pace of change in the industry. And you know, I, I've said it. You know, we know things are changing rather fast. But the average company, how much are they actually are they good at adopting change? And you know, you've called me on stoop. Enterprise is slow. Are Very they getting slow. any faster? You know, are they, are they open to change more? You know, what what, what do you see in 2019? Is is it any different than it was in you know 2009? I've, that's a great question. So I, <clears throat> the answer is yes. They're getting better. We are finally getting better. Um, the problem though is, as an industry insider or a watcher or a voyeur, whatever it is you are, is you see it and know what should happen. 10 years. It takes 10 years in general for the world to actually catch up to the stuff that we're talking about. So it's not really that helpful to the poor schleb that's running an operation that builds sneakers in Kansas. Right, that's not really that helpful that we're talking about, oh, this is what you could be doing and should be doing. The pace of change is much faster now because, and it, I give VMware most of the credit, because once that went into place, all of a sudden, and that, you got to remember there, everyone thinks VMware was an instant home run. It was 10 years of the same code sitting in a corner in a QA environment before finally we ran out of room in the data center. And that's the only reason they were able to come out. But once it was there and it enabled you to stop associating the physical to the, to the logical, once we could just dis disaggregate that stuff, that I think opened up a tidal wave of kind of what else can we do? And people have adopted, now, now it's pervasive, so VMware's everywhere. Now we're moving to the next level of kind of, well, why can't I just build a containerized app that I can execute anywhere I want? Matter of fact, I don't even want it in my data center. And no one has to know that necessarily. So as modernization exercises have started to take off, they just, they pick up, they actually pick up steam. So what we know empirically is those that are, are halfway down, call it the transformation or the modernization curve, are going three times faster than those just starting. And those guys are going three times faster than the ones that are sitting there in idle doing stuff the same way. Sitting in with the inertia going on. What do you make of this bubblicious you know, backup market? Um, let's talk about that a little bit. You got these big install bases, the Veritas, Commvault, Dell EMC, IBM, the old Tivoli install base. Everybody wants a piece of that action. Although I guess Cohesity and Rubric also want a piece of each other. Sure. Which is kind of, you know, they got that urinary Olympics going on, I like to say. <laughs> and, uh, and then you got these guys, which is kind of, you know, playing, uh, I said to Ash, it's kind of East Coast, West Coast. He goes, no, no, it's not East Coast, West Coast. But there's definitely more conservatism on this side of the, of the flyover states. What, what, what's your take on what's going on in the landscape right now? So backup is awesome from the perspective, again, st still probably the single most consistently line item budgeted thing for five decades now. Right, it's, it's, it's a guaranteed money in and out, and by and large, it still sucks, right? It's general rule, it's still, it's crazy that we haven't been able to solve that particular problem, but regardless. The reason that it's so important is 
besides the obvious, yeah, you need to protect stuff in case something goes away and something bad happens. Duh, you do it. But really, it's that's the ingest point for everything you do. You create data today, I'm backing it up an hour later. So that it backup becomes the ingest engine, and it also is the kicking off point. So at Tiffio, where it started as, wow, we, this is a better backup mousetrap, for lack of a better term. But really what it was is, didn't matter what, if it was backup or something else, it's I need to have the data in order to do other stuff with it. And backup is just the natural, easiest way to be able to do that. So I think what's finally happening is we're moving from, Christoph uh, would, t would say, it, it's really about uh, intelligent, intelligence more so than just capturing those bits and being able to assemble them and put it back together. It's understanding the context of those bits so that I can say, ah, Stu in uh, test dev has a different use case than Dave in whatever, analytics or et cetera, et cetera, but they both need a copy of the exact same data at the exact same state at the exact same point in time, et cetera. So, if, as long as backup's going to be kind of that tip of the spear in terms of going from what I will say production or live data to the first copy is almost always backup, it's going to matter. Yeah, Christoph, Christoph Bertrand, one of your analysts, and, and so we saw at uh, VMA and Danny Allen put up a slide, showed a $15 billion TAM, and you know, backup being the big chunk of that, probably half of it. Um, I don't know, does that jive with your gut feel in terms of the opportunity beyond backup, DevOps, you know, I don't know, ransomware, insights. So, you think that's low, high, makes sense? I, I think I could justify the number and what history has taught me is that it's probably low because we, we're only talking about a handful of use cases that we've all glommed onto, mm. but there will be. Remember, like 11 years ago there was no iPhone. You know, and how bad did that change everything that we do? over there and when did you know at some point during that particular journey the phone became who gives a shit about the phone excuse me but it's a text machine and it's an instagram thing and it's a, a video production facility and all these other things and the phone's almost ah, i only use it when my mom calls me kind of thing so you don't, you don't really it, it's it, it's difficult to imagine i certainly don't have the uh, mental capabilities to imagine what the next 10 things after DevOps and this, that, and the other, but it's still all predicated on the same. You got Somebody's got to have a copy of that data, and you got to be able to access it, and you got to be able to put it where you need it for whatever the reason. Again, a disaster is an important thing to recover from, but so is being able to farm that data for nuggets of gold. Well, I guess I asked the question because, you know, is it, the, the logical question is, is the market big enough to support all these companies that are in, you know, that Gartner, thing that they do, and I hope so, because we love competition, right? Well, and, uh, I mean, I think I can answer it this way. Everything, even the oldest guard, Veritas, for God's sakes, a thousand years old, TSM, a thousand years old, Commvault, Codebase, a thousand years old, these are all big companies, right? And they're not perishing anytime soon. And, I, so I, and don't get me wrong, love the startup, love the Actifios or the Cohesities coming in, but what they're really trying to do is not, you know, they might have started as in a common ground, backup as a common war zone, that we, because there's money there, right? There's consistent money there to go get, but they soon turn in to other value propositions. And that's not as true with the incumbent backup guys because of their own legacy, right? It's hard to turn a million year, million lines of code into something it wasn't designed to do. Yeah, and it's not trivial to disrupt that base, but I guess if you get, you know, raising, I don't know how much the industry has raised, but it's well over a billion dollars now. I mean, Actifio's raised 200 million, and that's like chump change compared to some of the other raises yeah. that you've seen. And Cohesity was 260, and, yeah, and their last rubric round. was even, right. you know, right. crazy. It's crazy. You even count the private money that Veeam got, is that, you know, that was half a billion, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, a, that's an off-camera discussion. All right, we got to go. <laughs> So, Steve, thanks so much for, for coming pleasure. to theCUBE. It's great pleasure. to have you. Yeah. All right, Wonderful. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE from Actifio, data-driven, from Boston, right in the harbor. Be right back. <laughs>